Perhaps you've heard these arguments on social media. Someone who says, well, the Bible doesn't actually say that homosexuality is a sin, it just talks about the behavior. Or maybe you've heard something on news outlets where a, uh, a gay pastor comes on and he talks about how that we know more things now than they knew then. And so we've just come to, to reinterpret the Bible in light of these new facts. Perhaps you've seen these things in debates in your own churches or your own denomination. Gay Christianity is around us, and none of us are unaffected by these things. And we shouldn't sit back timidly. All of these assaults on orthodox Christian thinking are intended to silence Christians, to make them feel ashamed, to make them step back to make us afraid to ask questions or to seek clarity, even afraid to enact church discipline within our churches. Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The reality is this is a spiritual war and there are spiritual casualties. Gay Christianity is a demonic ideology that devours people. It devours well-meaning Christians who want to be loving and not seen as offensive to their friends and neighbors. It devours Christian young people who are surrounded by LGBT decadence and acceptance. They don't want to be seen as the weirdo who believes that the Bible still has something to say to the 21st century. It devours pastors and church leaders who want to broaden their reach by just adjusting terms like sin and temptation grace and forgiveness and holiness and even the gospel and adjusting the expectations that the gospel has any sanctifying power. Of course, it devours LGBT people who are locked in the lie of believing that their unnatural lusts are actually just normal, that God smiles at this, that he's okay with it, that the real problem is actually the church or the Bible or even God himself. Now, I want to say up front that we need to have a sense of urgency, a sense of the spiritual peril that is here, and for our hearts to break over these issues. Now, it does affect people, but these, what I'm going to talk about today is not your conversations with your best friend who's come out of the closet as gay. I'm talking about the ideologies, the ideas, the attacks that are happening within, within churches and denominations. We can't sit idly by without caring. God gave us his word and his spirit, and we can take spiritual strongholds if we use the means that he gave us to do so.